Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach and today I'm talking about how to create romantic tension. So this is for people who are looking for dating advice, right, and how to create romantic tension. So the first thing that I want to get into is you gotta, if you want to, if you feel like you're the one that falls in love a lot faster and you're kind of hoping to get the other person to um, feel more things for you, to want to be closer to you, so that romantic connection, you know, begins, um, then what you got to do, if you feel like you're way into them, then they are into you at this current time, which is normal, people fall in love and feel attraction at different rates, you could be someone who falls in love really quickly, feel, find someone really attractive really quickly, um, and uh, the other person who you might be dating could be a, a lot slower. So basically, if you want to create romantic tension, um, then what you've got to do is when you're dating that person is that you've got to move way slower than what they are. So, you know, if it's taken them a while to warm up to you and to feel comfortable, then you have to, you know, back off, try not to force things and to allow their feelings to grow. So I'm going to go into a few ways that you can do that, how you can move a lot slower than what they are. So basically, you know, if they haven't brought up the topic about having a relationship with you or going out on more dates with you yet, then you don't bring those topics up. Um, what you've got to stick to is like a sort of schedule where you only see them once a week or you only go on a date with them once a week. So that means you ask them out once a week, you make a date and you go out on that date and you keep going like that until they start warming up to you more that means they start messaging you more they start phoning you up more you know they they, they you know they contact you a lot more basically and if they're contacting you a lot more that means than they did at the beginning that means they're starting to develop more feelings for you right so what you've got to do is you've got to back off limit the communication that you have with them when you're dating them so set up a date basically don't speak that much in between the dates right and when you do go on a date have a great time have fun have a you know great experience together where you can get to know each other and you get comfortable with one another things like that and if they really like you then what will happen is once they clock on to the fact that you're only asking them out once a week and you only get to see each other once a week they'll realize oh I probably need to reach out to them more if I want to see them more, if I want to hang out with them more. And whenever they do reach out to you and start reaching out to you more, so they're the ones that are like initiating the conversation, shall we say, all you have to do is make plans with them for another date. That's all you have to do, right? And um, you just keep it at that pace for a while, basically like seeing them once a week until they start doing that, and still, until they start reaching out to you more. So that's what I mean by going a lot slower. So if they aren't talking about relationships and being in a relationship with you, don't bring it up. If they're not talking about going out on the next date with you, don't bring it up. Don't bring up basically going out on a date with someone, you know, who you've only perhaps been out on one date with. Don't try to arrange the next date on the date. Like if they bring it up, then it's fine, you know, but if they don't bring it up, then wait until the date's over and then wait a few days ask them out again and see what happens. And if they like you, they'll go out on another date with you. But the point is, is that you want to move really slowly, especially if you do seem to jump the gun and do these sorts of things where you're kind of hoping that another date's going to happen and you start making new plans. So if they're not initiating that, then you shouldn't be initiating it, right? So keep it sort of like to that level. And the reason why I say you have to hold back is because you're the one that's seeking out this information, you're hoping to create more romantic tension and you're probably one of these people like me who wanna rush in really fast and have that romantic love story happen immediately and you know, to you know basically have that romance straight away. But sometimes it takes a while for people to warm up to you. And if you know, you're know you one of these people that jumps the gun and tries to make things happen faster to the pace that the other person is going, then you're the one that has to go slower and you have to kind of leave the ball in their court a little bit for them to grow their feelings for you. And that's why I say, if they're not bringing it up about having a relationship, don't bring it up yourself because you're the one that likes to jump the gun, right? You're the one that likes to make things go faster. And that's why you don't bring up the topic about going out on another date because 
like I said, you're the one that jumps the gun and they're not. So it has to be their idea because it has to be them that falls in love with you now. Like you're probably already there. You're probably already hoping that this is going to turn into a relationship. But if this person isn't, then it has to be their idea. They have to bring it up, you know, on a date. Of course, you still ask them out once a week. Yeah, but you don't do it while you're on the date. You do it like four or five days after the date has happened, right? So I hope that makes sense. So... Um, another way to do this, how to create more romantic, uh, um, romant romantic um, tension, is when you are in between dates, so let's say um, you asked a girl out or a guy out, you went out on a date, um, and it's, you, what you've got to do is you've got to wait a few days before you ask them out again, and when you ask them out on a date, leave it a few days in advance. Like, don't say, okay, how about we meet up tomorrow? Don't do that, right? What you've got to do is you've got to maybe, maybe stretch out like a week, you know, in advance. So let's say you ask them out again on Monday and you see them on the Sunday or the Monday, you know, try and stretch it out because if they're not there yet, if they're not at that level yet where they're falling in love and you can sense that and you can feel like you're feeling a lot of things, but they're not really there, they're not really that into it yet then you have to leave a long time between dates and try to minimise contact between those dates. Because the idea is that you want to get to know them in person. If you're getting to know them over the phone, like via texting and stuff, it gets boring because, first of all, um, you know, you're, you're in each other's DMs all the time and they can't miss you and they can't be curious about you if they're always seeing your, your name pop up on their phone and they're always getting notifications from you. Right? They can't miss you if you're always in their DMs. So what you've got to do is you've got to limit the amount of contact that you have with them in between dates so that that romantic tension grows and they anticipate and look forward to the date and you appear more mysterious, right? So you want to minimise contact in between dates. And also, if you're texting a lot and messaging a lot, just be very careful because there can be miscommunication when you are texting and messaging all the time, right? Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, they may take something the wrong way that you say to them. You know, it could be the way that you've punctuated something. It could be the emojis that you put. They may take it the wrong way. So it's better and it's less risky to actually get to know them in person and to minimize contact. So you might be thinking, yeah, well, you know, a lot of people these days, they love texting and they love messaging and things like that. Well, the thing is, is that that may be true, but... It's not a good idea to do it because of this whole miscommunication thing that can occur, that can happen. So what you want to do, if someone's getting antsy at you because you're not messaging that much, because I had that a couple of times when I was in the dating world and I was, you know, before I met my wife, um, you know, I if I didn't message someone back, they, they would send me like an angry message saying, why are you not speaking to me? Or they would just block me altogether. Um, or they would be like, what, is there going to be just radio silence in between when I see you and things like that? You know, and what, what you realise is that these techniques that I teach and a lot of other dating coaches teach when it comes to like minimising contact in between dates is that it brings out the worst behaviour in the worst people and it brings out the best behaviour in the best kind of people. People with a high self-esteem won't mind if you don't message them that much, especially if you have a good excuse, like, I'm I'm sorry to cut the conversation short, but I gotta go, I'm busy, I gotta go back to work, I've got something I need to attend to, I've got some chores that I need to finish, you know, or it could be the case that you might just say, you know, I just prefer getting to know people in person because I feel like when there's messaging, there's a lot of miscommunication, but please know that I'm really looking forward to seeing you, I just don't really wanna, and I'm really looking forward to the date, but I just don't really want to message that much if that's okay. I, I prefer it if we actually just use messaging and things like that to just set up times that we could actually meet up because that's what I feel more comfortable with. Now, people who have, you know, a good head on their shoulders and isn't toxic won't mind that kind of thing. They won't care, especially if you give like a good sort of reason like that. They will actually respect you for that actually because you're being honest and open and they won't mind you know, they won't get, you know, they won't um, attack you for doing that if you have a good reason. And if you say it just like how I just did, then, and you, you explain it in that way, it's going to be a lot better. Um, and people that are good, that have a sensible head on their shoulders, won't go crazy about it and won't get mad at you for it, okay? So, um, the another way to create romantic tension, especially if you're physically together, 
so like when you're intimate basically like how do you create romantic tension like when you're alone with each other in your house or their house or something like that you know what do you do so the best thing to do I personally think is to kind of go back to what I was saying earlier which is you want to go a lot slower than what they are right so that makes the anticipation happen a lot more so for example, you might be hanging out on the sofa and you can tell things might be getting a little bit hot and heavy. You know, just wait like 10 minutes. Just keep on doing what you're doing for another 10 minutes or another 20 minutes, right? And um, that's going to give them a really good experience when they when you do get intimate because, you know, you've left it a long while. There's been a lot of, you know, foreplay, shall we say. So, you know, what you want to do is you want to take it a lot slower than what they want, right? And when you do get intimate it's going to be amazing and it's going to be really 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 passionate and romantic so that's what you've got to do with that you know kind of have that attitude of I'm going to go slower than what they are and just taking things time just take your time you know have patience with this and when it comes to being intimate patience is the best thing that you can do you know as long the more it's drawn out the more longer it is um you know the process the foreplay that kind of thing the better it is trust me take your time there's no rush right and you're gonna have the best they're gonna have the best experience you're gonna have the best experience if you wait and allow things to just take their time there's no rush there's no rush that's what you got to remember that's what you got to remember when it comes to like the feelings and also with being intimate there's no rush don't rush the dating process right obviously there are a couple of ways that you can speed it up you know a great way to actually speed up the dating process is to go to multiple places on a date because then it feels like you're having more dates right so you could meet up for a drink then you might go out for a walk somewhere you might look around the town um you might go and look at some landmarks do a bit of you know tourists if you live in a kind of like a city where there's a lot of tourist stuff or you know just go to some interesting places where you live where you're hanging out where you're on that date Um, then you may go somewhere to like have like some appetizers or you might go somewhere for ice cream and then later on you go somewhere for a meal go go to loads of different places and that will kind of speed up that kind of dating process and you'll have more experiences together because the more experiences you have together basically that means you know the the more connection you're going to get the better you're going to get to know each other and basically you know when you're with someone basically your whole life together you know um, if you if you are planning on spending your life together with someone, right, the, your whole relationship is all about a series of experiences that you have together. So the more experiences you have together, the more it feels like a relationship and the more romantic it feels, the more intimate it feels. And you just get to know each other a lot faster and you get to feel more comfortable around each other a lot faster because you're in different environments and different situations with each other. So the more different situations, the more different experiences you can have on a date by going to different places, doing different things, the better and the more faster you're gonna get to know each other and the more quicker they're gonna feel more comfortable with you. Um, And especially if it's fun, if it's, you know, you're having a laugh, you're having a good time, you know, it's just positive emotion just everywhere, then that's really gonna give you like the best sort of dates. And the last point I wanna make is romantic connections and things cannot be forced they have to be felt so it could be the case you go out on a date you try all these things and it still doesn't work they still don't feel anything for you and it could be the process where you you know you you've been on a few dates with them and things just aren't moving and you can kind of tell that they don't feel comfortable and it may be just the case that this this person just isn't it and you can't force something romantic to happen if the other person isn't feeling any romantic feelings towards you if they don't like you in that way, if they're getting uncomfortable around you, if they don't feel comfortable around you at all, you know, there's not really too much you can do about that situation, um, except perhaps give it time and see if the situation changes. But more than likely, if they don't like you, they will stop dating you anyway. So, you know, you can't force these things, which is why I say if you're someone who falls in love a lot faster, you have to take things super slow, you know, and you have to go a lot slower than the other person you have to kind of match their pace and perhaps go a lot a lot and and go a lot slower than them so they have time to pursue you and to feel things for you and if you want to see someone falling in love with you then go a lot slower than what they are because then you will be able to see them developing those feelings for you by the fact that they're reaching out to you more they want to see you more and it's a really great experience to have when you kind of back off and just allow them to feel what they want to feel 
and give them that space. So that's my advice on how to create romantic tension. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. And if you would like to get in touch with me personally, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com. Thank you so much for watching and I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye guys.